You probably not heard about this university, but 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, free MacBooks, tech to rent, free outputs, and unbearable heat with the temperature reaching up to 37.8 degrees in June, July, and August. Yes, University of Arizona has it all. And in this video, we'll not only discuss the cool aspects of it, but we'll also ask one of the students, Harini, studying right from how tough it is to get an internship or job if you are a University of Arizona student to finally the return of investment, whether it is worth investing $70,000. But how much would University of Arizona really cost? So let's say if you choose LR, which is the most popular management and in information system program, does the investment include cost of living? But please don't compare it with ASU, which is Arizona State University. We always get compared to ASU. <laughs> it is a complete separate universities. I know they get often get compared together. So those are two separate universities. So what's the total tuition fees? So the total tuition fee depends every batch. For our batch, the total I-20 cost was around 68,000. That's for 16 months. For 16 months, okay. All right. Three semesters. From our last two videos, you might have got used to hearing the rates like 2,000, 2,500 per month as the living expenses. But does that hold true for University of Arizona too? So mostly all the MIS or the Indian students prefer living at two apartments, which is U at Park and Entrada. So you get a private room with a private bath uh, mm. in Entrada and with a shared bath at U at Park and with all the utilities and basic amenities, which will be around 650 if you book it early. And it depends on the season as well. But I live at Campus Crossing, so it is cheaper because it's a furnished shared apartment. So it's already set to be shared. So I pay 340 and then the electricity bill comes around 70, which is for the three of us. So it we divide that and I have also taken a renter's insurance from certainly that is for $7. Mm. So I can manage all this within 400. What about groceries and normal cost of living? Because we have the campus pantry, I get milk, eggs, bread and uh, canned vegetables, everything from the pantry. So I don't have to spend that much on groceries. So that $100 cap within the 500 less. Yeah. They live in the other side, it's 700 just for the rent and then they have to think about couches. But for you, it's like 400 to 600. That's like the maxes. Though the housing rates are really low, are there any downsides to it owing to the fact that it is a smaller town? Yes, you guessed it right. It is networking. You know, students who are in University of Arizona, because it's a small town, they have to travel almost two hours to network like students in ASU because it is already in the main city. But do you have to worry about that? Well, not really much because the university has tied up with a lot of companies. So they bring companies on campuses for the networking purpose, which is super cool. So by now you might be thinking mm, 500 to 700 sounds manageable, Yuri. Hold up because I have a little more surprise to you, which is going to make it even more better, which is on campus jobs. So let's first understand how tough it is to get one. And even if you get one, how tough would it be to manage your finances with your on campus jobs? Yes, I'm working at the student union and it is minimum wage. It's $13.5 yeah. uh, with taxes and all that. So I'm able to manage it. But if you opt for a private room, then you might have to work the whole 20 hours to be able to cover it. But how easy it is to get an on-campus job here? It's not very easy, but definitely easier than other universities because the crowd is less here. And I've got like two part-time jobs and I dropped one and I'm just working for one. But I know friends in other universities, till the final semester, they weren't able to find a part-time job at all. Mm. So they had to take out their living expense from their student loan. But what about TA and RA jobs? Because these are the on-campus job that everyone doesn't have. So yeah, they are available, but it will not be available to everyone. So our batch size increased. So in our batch, not everyone was able to get one. I haven't got one too, mm. but I'm hoping I'll get one for the final semester. But if you get it, then there's nothing better than that because it'll drastically reduce your tuition fee and you get a monthly pay as well. So you don't have to do a part-time job. We of tuition fees plus you get salary on it. Okay, I know you're thinking that it's still $70,000 UD and I come from lower middle class family. How will I be able to afford this? I don't even have a property to show as a collateral or a co-signer. Well, that's where Empower comes in, who's also kindly sponsoring the video. What I love about them is that they give you loan 
income based on your skills and ability and they bet on your future versus your current financial situation. The best part is that it is no collateral, no co-signer and it is a fixed interest rate loan. And they don't stop there. They are customer obsessed, which means they help you throughout your end to end journey through their part to success program, which includes visa support, scholarship, career services and so on. Also, they have 4.7 ratings out of five on Trustpilot voted by 2500 students, which speaks a lot about them. If you're someone like me who comes from a lower middle class family, need an education loan, don't have a collateral co-signer, I highly recommend them. Check the link in the description to find out how much loan are you eligible for. Okay, we've discussed enough about finances, but what about the core structure and the opportunity you will unlock if you do decide to choose MIAS program? So you need around 30 to 35 or 37 credits to graduate and the first semester is fixed. You cannot select anything in the first semester. It's preset. So you will have very technical subjects in the first semester. As I mentioned, EDM, you will have data mining and business intelligence. You will have networking, all this in the first semester. And you will also have a business communication, which is a foundation to consulting and project management. So if you do end up choosing MIA program in LR, since we have already discussed that it would cost you around $70,000, will it be worth it though? So I know this is a bit costlier than other universities, but it's worth it and it's a business school degree. So you get to learn tech and the business side here. And what about faculty? Are they supportive enough? Let's ask Harini's roommate who's doing a master's in data science. Yes, I think the faculty here is really nice. Like uh, for example, I was working in IT before joining here and I have a background in electrical engineering so I'm not really from the data science bracket. Whenever I reach out to a faculty and tell them listen I need to do something to enhance my profile please guide me and they are like so sweet they are always like yeah please come. So they are giving like a special yeah, attention. Right, right. But will she recommend her juniors to consider this universities and what about the experiences like as compared to other universities? <clears throat> Syracuse? <laughs> Absolutely. I think I have not taken anything away from the other universities, but I do have friends who are studying in other universities that I did not opt it for. Like Syracuse. Like Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so when I talk with them and I feel like I'm in a better place. But you might be wondering, but Yuri, apart from the core structure, that sounds great. I've heard that universities, you can't attend a class because the enrollment period starts and everyone just jumps in and tries to fill up the class as quickly as possible. So is that true with University of Arizona? Oh, no. It's not 5, but it's 6 a.m. It's still waking up early. <laughs> so it's first come first basis. So you won't find it a struggle in the first and the second semester, but uh, it's all electives in the third semester. Mm. So you will have to wake up early if you want like core courses like project management or data visualization. So yeah, you get one extra hour of sleep as compared to ASU. Jokes aside, before we talk about internships and job opportunities, along with what courses you can take if you are not a tech person, let's talk about the infrastructure. So let's start with the main library, which is the biggest in Arizona state and it has mind blowing facilities. Check this out. Harini is back here with us. We are, where are we? We are still at the main library. Main library, but this is like bear down. What is bear down? Mean? Uh, this is the mascot and the tagline for University of Arizona. Okay, got it. Uh, what do you mean by like you can rent out the laptop for entire masters? Yes, that's possible. Uh, you like can like MacBook. Yeah, Mac, PC, wow. Microsoft Surface Pro. So iPads. someone who's watching this mm -hmm. and planning to come to LR, they don't really have to buy a laptop. They can come here, get a fancy MacBook. Yes. For entire masters, yes. and then they can just renew the laptop. Wow, this is interesting. We usually have like group projects and assignments to work on. Okay. Uh, so the, the group projects things, we do it in the library together yeah. sometimes. And yeah, you know, the library have like special rooms, like um, you can have like individual study rooms and nice. uh, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. And also projector room, presentation room. So nice. it's okay, but during a long day of work and you would obviously feel hunger a little less than me though. <laughs> Let's see if uh, University of Arizona has something to cure your hunger Thanks. Okay, where are we now? So we are at the student union food court. So right behind me is the Indian restaurant called Saffron Bites. And we have other restaurants like Fanda Express, Papa John's Pizza, IQ Fresh, Chick-fil-A, extra. Okay, but you might ask Yuri, like the food courts, I'm not going to be able to afford to eat every day over here. So is there kind of a life hack over here? Absolutely. Here you go. I work at the student union, so I do get a 40% discount 
on all these restaurants. Nice. Yeah. On days that I work for more than six hours, uh, I get the forty percent discount, so I can have it once a day. And there is a bookstore too. And yeah, I know you're probably gonna be like, "Is there a discount?" Yes, there is, but there's a catch to it. Check this out. Where are we? I see the bookstore here. Yeah, we are right in front of the bookstore, and it is also part of the student union. And I regularly buy stuff from the bookstore because we get a forty percent employee discount here as so well. So if I buy something, I can still use your discount. It's on specific days. It's not every day. So they'll send out an email saying okay. that we have the employee discount today, Got and we can go ahead and get it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now imagine the worst case scenario that you don't even have clothes to wear, which I. Hope that doesn't happen. But let's say if that happened, does University of Arizona has something to offer for this too? Close. It's not exactly rent out. You can have it forever. Oh wow! Yeah. So like, if I don't have a blazer mm -hmm. or something, yes. I can just go and get it. Where? How do I get it? So there are specific timings in which the campus closet opens. So you can go in and see what you like, try to fit it, and find the best for you and have it. So it's based on donations. So it's still in good condition. They don't give out like bad clothes. It's still in very good condition and uh, you'll find a lot of professional clothes oh, here. That's awesome. Okay, by now I know you're probably rushing to fill up the application form, but wait, let's discuss something about internship and job opportunities and let's see if there is something for non-tech people as well. The ROI is great because I saw the previous batch students, almost everyone is getting it, but for our batch, we have to blame the market. Yeah. It's not Eller, it's not us right. it's not the faculty it's just the market yeah because um, for people who might be watching this next year we are right now filming in 2023 and there was the massive layoffs in the beginning of the year and the market there's like lots and lots of job shifting happening so they are not just competing with their batchmates they are also competing with the like thousands batch. of yeah. people who got laid off okay so that was for 2023 where the job market was unstable obviously kind of recession but since it's getting better let's know what if the market was good will the roi return of investment will be worth it yeah the roi is pretty good and then even for the full time job like does people end up yeah, usually getting it's a, usually good yeah so wrapping up you could choose eller if you purely want to get into tech management role maybe hardcore tech is not your cup of tea and you would like to do more communication on clients and tech management roles or consulting roles but if you do want to go into hardcore tech there are masters program for that as well eller is obviously well known for or MIS program and if you're someone who wants to like uh, you know like I said enjoy data analyst and business analyst and product management LR MIS program is the way to go and like I said if you are someone into hardcore programming then they do have a data science and computer science program. If you talk about specific companies, then companies like Amazon, Adobe and Intel and all the other companies which you see on the screen, they all recruit from University of Arizona with a median salary of 109,000 to 151,000. This is according to 2022 stats. You might have heard that Eller does offer an option where you can do a free MBA along with your MIS program. Is that true? So, and I would also also like to mention that the LR uh, department offers a program called uh, TLP which is technology leadership program mm. which comes with uh, two degrees which is MIS and MBA which is a dual degree. Okay so let's finally ask a question about advice for someone who wants to choose LR and was the $70,000 investment worth it? So I would say that you have to streamline your applications based on your career goals. Like you have to do the research before applying and not after applying. So before applying, you can go to the website and see what courses each university is offering and will you be able to cope up with that? Does it align with your career goals? Does it match your uh, interest? Like will you be able to do that and reach out to people in the university and ask about the course if you have any doubts? I feel that this research is important before applying and not after applying because that is when you have to worry about housing and yeah. transportation and stuff. And final question, mm -hmm. is a $70,000 investment worth it? Definitely worth it. Wow, okay, cool. So ultimately, this all comes down to what do you want and what is your experience that you are expecting when you come to United States for your master's program? Do you want something like NYU, which does have brand value, New York City vibe, but then on the other hand, it does have 5,000 plus international students or Indian students and 300 to 400 and every single batch where you can't even get into the classes you really want to get? 
or do you want to choose something which is into a smaller town and not as many students you get one on one attention with the department and with the faculty so ultimately the choice is yours i would highly recommend to do your own research but at least now i hope that this video gives you a clear picture of what your life will look like in university of arizona by the way i've also done the same for george washington university and nyu university so if you want to watch that go check them out